Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant here. I got a CCNP route video practice exam and lab for you on EIGRP. And I'm changing the format a little bit here. I've got five questions for you on one screen and they're all short answer, no multiple choice. And at least one of them is a little more like a job interview type question. Maybe not a ton of detail, but something you should be aware of. And it might just show up on your exam too. So let's go ahead and dive into these questions. I know you can only see four right now, but there are five, so hang in there. First off, name the table or tables that contain the EIGRP feasible successors. Next, name the five EIGRP packet types. It's a good warm up. A route not being currently calculated by dual will be indicated by what letter in the EIGRP topology table? Now, if a route is currently being calculated by dual, what letter would you see next to it? You should know how to find some of this information on the routers as well, which I'll show you in the lab in just a moment. And then finally, fifth question, what, you sh what should you be wary of when using the passive interface command in EIGRP? Pretty straightforward stuff there, right? So we're going to head for the rack in just a moment. Just a quick word, thank you for making my route video boot camp on Udemy such a huge success. And right now, it's not a gimmick, but it's not forever either. You can get into this course for $44. I apologize for the screwy URL here, CCMP Route On Demand Video Bootcamp. I'll show you a quicker way to get to it. But all you got to do is click on Redeem It, enter Bulldog 60, hit Apply, and there is your price, $44, and it's 22 hours of the best video boot camp training I have ever created. If you want to check out all the courses I have on Udemy, just go to udemy.com slash you slash Chris Bryant. It's going to show you all my courses, plenty of free content out there, and even the paid courses have at least one hour of video for you to watch before you buy. So check that out when you get the chance. Now let's head back to the questions. And the first one, which are our tables that contain the feasible successors? Well, first off, of course, what are our three tables to begin with? We've got our route table, we've got our neighbor table, and we've got our topology table. You're not going to see the successor or the feasible su successor in the neighbor table, so that does narrow it down a little bit. And let's go ahead and bring the rack up. And router 1 has an EIGRP adjacency with routers 2 and 3. Routers 2 and 3 are both advertising a loopback where their own router number is every octet. There's also an Ethernet segment thrown out. But this is what I want to show you, really. Show IP route EIGRP. And don't think you're going to be running show IP route forever because as you advance in your career and you're working with larger and larger networks, routing tables get huge. So you want to be able to filter what route you're seeing. And this is a good way to see only your EIGRP routes. Now you'll notice there's one entry for the loopback on router 2, one entry for the loopback on router 3, and then two entries for this particular network. And you'll notice it's because we know the metric is exactly the same. But if we run, run show IP topology EIGRP, can't believe I did that. Let's try that. Show IP EIGRP topology. What you're going to see then are two entries for the loopback on router three, two entries for the loopback on router two. And you'll notice it does say one successor. That's because your feasible successors are found only in the topology table. Your successors are found in two tables. They're found in the topology table and in the route table. And again, let me just uh, go all the way here with neighbor. And they're your neighbors, but you're not going to see any information in there about successors or feasible successors. Now, the routes not being currently calculated and being currently calculated by dual. Let's bring the rack right back up. And you're going to see here in the topology table P for passive, and you'll notice that all the routes in the table right now are passive. That means that they're stable. They're not currently being calculated by dual. When a route goes active, that means that basically, usually what, the, what causes that is the successor is lost, there is no feasible successor, and dual has started the query process trying to get another entry for that lost network. And hopefully when you do see the capital letter A, you don't see it for very long because the process is very, very quick. Finally here, and let's test this out as well, what should you be wary of when using passive interface in EIGRP? Well, you're introduced to this command actually in your RIP studies, and we use it there and there's no problem, but there's not a whole lot going on in RIP and especially adjacencies. So what happens if you use the same command in EIGRP? 
Well, let's find out. Let's go ahead and go back to our prompt. And this one, even though the command actually mentions the word interface, you actually put it in under the router process. And serial zero, we could see over here, is the interface being used for the adjacency. So when we make that passive, you're going to see a couple of neighbor changes immediately, and they're not changes for the better because what you see is that they are down and it even says interface passive. So the router is even telling you what just happened. So if this ever happens to you, all you got to do, first remain calm. That can be the hardest part when you suddenly start seeing adjacencies fall. And just repeat the command, but put no in front of it. And let's see if our adjacencies come back up here pretty quickly. Let's stick around for that. Okay, not yet. Think we need to do anything else? Because not everything happens immediately. Do we need to reload this router, you think? Not there yet. It went down pretty quickly. What do you think? Let's go down to routers two and three. And it looks like, yep, those had not come down yet. On router 2 side, let's go back up to router 1. And there we go. So you can see they just come up 8 or 9 seconds. So they didn't come back up immediately, and that's something to be aware of as well. Because when you put passive interface on there, you know, they, they went down within 2 seconds. But when you bring the interface back up, it can take more than 2 seconds to get that done. Thanks for taking today's CCNP route video practice exam. And as always, thanks for making TBA part of your CCNP success story.